Hello, hello, testing microphone, testing one, two. All right, we're hot. Hi guys, and welcome back to VR Essentials, one of your most trusted virtual reality YouTube channels here where we also talk about everything in relation to the metaverse. Today, very exciting video as I'm gonna be talking to you about sharing my feelings and what it was like, my impressions in using the Pico Neo3 Link after a good week worth or about 25 hours, I would say. So this is the Pico Neo3 Link here. I'm also gonna compare it a little bit, you know, in terms of my impressions to the Pico Neo3 Pro, which is its older brother. So this is the Pro, this is the link here. Then I'm also going to give you, you know, my comparison to the HP Reverb G2 version two, and yeah, all that good stuff. But you know, first, I'm gonna give you all the things that basically a lot of the other YouTubers, YouTubers perhaps, some of them didn't really touch on or didn't have time to touch on because they gave you the first initial impressions right out of the box. Now, I've been doing this for quite a long time with various, with the Pico Neo 3 Pro and all these kind of things. So I thought I'd leave it a little bit longer to give you more of a feeling as to what it's like after using it for at least 20 hours. Now, first of all, if you have a laptop with the HP, for example, G7 Fury ZBook. This is the 15 inch. Now, this is not the latest model. The latest model is the G8. This is the G7. It is absolutely amazing to use the Pico Neo3 Link. First of all, because the actual software that comes from the website works perfectly well. The other thing is that when you're using this laptop, the software which basically enables you to do two things. First, you can use your Pico Neo 3 Link. For those who are not familiar with this headset, it's basically a wireless standalone VR headset which enables you to play apps without having to use a computer of any kind. Everything is inside out of the bat. But for those who are into PC VR are also very curious about what it's like to use this thing with a PC. So that is why I'm talking about the HP G7 Fury because it enables you to basically do two things First, to wirelessly patch to Steam VR, where all the apps are inside of the desktop or the laptop. And also you can use a cable called the DP cable, which would render the images at true 4K definition, which is completely uncompressed. So I just wanna say for those who left some comments inside of previous videos, and do go and check out those videos, you know, who said that the software didn't work, well, Perhaps it didn't work when you left those comments or you're fudding because at the end of the day, when I received the headset and I downloaded it, it worked perfectly fine. I also left some tweets to go to our Twitter channel. We have more than 700 followers over there where we post some experiments some quick things and stuff like that. So do go and follow us there and thank you for following us to those who are already uh, followers there. But I'm just saying that at the end of the day, the software works perfectly well. Now, I will do a separate video, so do go and hit the notification bell after you subscribe as to how to make sure it works properly without having any bugs. Because there are some other videos out there where apparently some YouTubers who are completely inexperienced in the world of Pico, of course, I've been using Pico now for more than a year. There are some tips and tricks to make sure that it works perfectly well without any issues. For example, if you're Steam VR, you, you should make sure that you install your Pico software in the same uh, in the same partition as your Pico. If you are going to have Steam VR in, for example, the uh, partition B or, or E or D, and your Pico software is inside of the C, then it's, oh sorry, if your Pico software is gonna be um, installed in the D or the E, but your, your Steam VR is in the C partition, then already you're gonna have some issues there. You're gonna have to delete your Steam VR, uh, then reinstall it, you know, all these kind of things. And also when you start off, the actual headset, sometimes the audio doesn't work. That's simply because you need to make sure, first of all, that the driver for the audio you choose before you patch before you patch the headset to the actual Steam VR, it needs to be enabled, not after you enable Steam VR. Otherwise, again, you have to restart everything from scratch. So there are various different tips and tricks. So do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I will do separate videos for that specifically. So is it more difficult, for example, to patch the Pico Neo 3 link to the PC compared to the HP Reverb G2? No, it's absolutely the same. Both take the amount, same time. You have to 
you know, open the software on your PC, both for the Pico software or the HP Windows Mixed Reality software, and then you have to, you know, go into Steam VR. Um, there are also some other YouTubers who said that with the Pico Neo 3D Link, that it doesn't start SteamVR automatically. You have to be by your PC, click a button. It's not true. Um, you actually only have to do that once. And after that, once you've enabled it, it's automatic every single other time. It's just that the other YouTubers, unfortunately, only gave you the first impression when they use the Pico Neo 3 link only once and not twice and not three times, or they only maybe used the headset to the PC one time if they used it more than one time wirelessly, right? So I just wanted to make those kind of things clear. It is very easy to patch to a PC using the Pico Neo 3 Link as it is with the HP Reverb G2. Now, there are, however, some other things that occur. For example, after using it for a week, now, personally speaking, I have to use a spacer which comes with the headset because I wear glasses. Now the pro of this, of course, is that there's tons of room inside. If you have glasses like mine or a little bit larger or a little bit wider, you're probably not gonna have a problem whatsoever. It's gonna be really, really good, very, very comfortable, both for the Link and also for the Pro, I've had no issues. It's exactly the same size, so all good on that. In fact, I would say that it's a little bit better on the Pico Neo 3 Link compared to the Pro because the facial interface isn't so hard, isn't so tough on the face, so it's not gonna leave a mark as bad as the Pro because the Pro, um, if I just show you very quickly, it basically has a rubber kind of facial interface. Now, the rubber one, of course, the pro is that if you're doing enterprise events or all those kind of things, then you can wipe it very easily, uh, you know, and, 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 and be safe in that regards. For this one, there is no rubber protection to put on top of it. There's no replacement to put on top of it. So this is really a very, I would say, personal experience for this VR headset. You would not want to use this at a trade show unless you were able to get from Pico a replacement uh, with the actual rubber one, but I'm not sure if Pico actually provide these, although it is possible if you're a developer or an enterprise that they will help you out. But at the moment, if you're a consumer, they won't. So if you have a family, for example, I would definitely avoid passing your headset too often, or maybe, Maybe, you know, make sure you wash it every now and then because if you're using it yourself for let's say 20 hours and you sweat and you use some uh, VR fitness, you know, racket NX or golf or tennis or uh, 11 table tennis or all these kind, you know, or, 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 or synth riders and all these kind of things where you sweat quite a lot. The sweat gets then soaked up in here and then you're gonna pass it to your mother, your father, your brother, your sister or your friend who comes over I'm like, I mean like, Come on, guys, if you're gonna use your headset and sweat, even once, it's like going to the gym, right? We don't go to the gym, sweat one time, and then leave the things, the towel behind, and or, 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 or not wipe the behind of the actual fitness chair. No, we always will wipe it so that the next person that comes along at least won't be in your sweat. I know how it sounds, it sounds really horrible. So I'm just saying it's the same thing for this. It's not because it suddenly dries up and it looks new that the bacteria is still not in here. You gotta wash it. Now you can buy, of course, some antibacterial spray and then just spray it afterwards or you can just put it in the washing machine and wash it that way. But the spray, of course, perhaps could be good enough, but it won't beat the washing machine, of course, because then it will wash the inside of it and not just the outside when you're spraying with antibacterial stuff. So just be aware of that. It's a much more personal experience. Now, the other thing that I found very annoying, however, even though it's great when you have glasses and you can go inside, there's no issue whatsoever, is the fact that the actual facial interface comes off a lot. Um, and also with the spacer, I just want to show you guys, I'm not sure whether you can see here, this one here, I'm not sure if you can see on the camera or not, but basically it's already kind of broken. Like it's, it's it basically it's very hard to put it inside the headset without being able to affect the actual little things. Now these things are made out of plastic and they're very, very soft plastic. So unfortunately, it means that my VR headset, for me anyway, with the spacer on, you see here, um, it's actually very hard to keep it inside. 
Very, very hard. It's got all the things that you need inside here, but this is the cheap part of the headset. I will see this is what, this is the cheapest part of the headset. What makes it feel and look cheap is the fact that when I put the, when I put this in, it doesn't click in all the time um, on every, on every single all around. So basically it means that with the spacer, I have a problem because it will come off like very easily. So Pico, when you do your next headset, I think it'd be great to implement, like, let me show you the difference. With the HP Reverb G2, it's very, very easy. All you have to do is you take it out like this. And you see this has magnetic technology. These things here are magnetic and there are magnets inside of the headset. So all you do is you basically do this, just pull this up and then it's in. There's nothing else to do. It's not gonna come off. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. I think manufacturers, you know, I'm not quite sure how much it would cost more to do something like that or, you know, some other system, but I'm just saying that this just comes off so easily that for me, that's, that's a bit of an issue. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit annoying, I have to admit. So it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, once the headset is on my face, of course, there's no issue because the back, this, and having this on my face, of course, is gonna tighten it, so it's not gonna come off. But I'm just saying that when I take off the headset, it might come off. So that would be the annoying part. So I'm just saying, be wary, be, you know, understand that when you're gonna put this inside of your headset, to, very, to really be patient, really, really be patient. It's very important that you're patient. Uh, you know, if you can't click it, don't worry about it. What can I tell you? You know, just find another way, just be patient. It will take some time. Without the spacer, it's a little bit easier to put it in, I have to admit. But with the spacer, for those who wear glasses, well, Compared to the, to the Pico Neo 3 Pro, which by the way, on the Pico Neo 3 Pro, I don't need the spacer. We'll talk about this in just a moment because there are some differences there. Uh, you also have to wiggle it around, so not just click it in. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, basically that's, that's the annoying part for me. I think if there was maybe a Velcro system, it would have been better, or even both, like you have a Velcro versus non-Velcro, because at the end of the day, all you want is you want this to be stuck on it, you don't want it to click in it, that's not important. What's important is that it sticks on it so that when you put your, your headset on uh, or you take it off, then it doesn't fall off. So I'm thinking that maybe what people, manufacturers could do is instead of having a clicking system, it's just put like a Velcro system around it so that you, it, it's, it tapes inside automatically, like double-sided tape almost. Um, so that's, that's, that's the first thing. Now, in terms of the weight distribution and how it feels after wearing it, let's say for more than three hours, because I've done that in uh, various different apps, including Population One, uh, some Tribe XR. I mean, Population One was awesome. You do move a lot with your VR headset. You look up, you look down, you look right, you look left, you're running around. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot going on and basically, after three hours in population one, honestly speaking, I can say that I didn't really have that many issues whatsoever. Um, in fact, we can talk about some, some of the gameplay in terms of microphone, for example. Microphone works absolutely like a charm. There's no problems whatsoever. You have the options inside of the game, which enables you to pick the right microphone, um, you know, and people can hear. However, the only thing that's annoying about the microphone is that people can hear everything in your house all the way down to the street. So uh, I personally do not use the microphone inside of this headset. I will personally use these headphones plus the Ant Leon microphone. Now you can of course buy another head set of headphones which have the extra microphone on it instead of like me, which comes off the actual headset, uh, headphones, sorry. So. Um, you know, I'm just saying that I prefer using this microphone because then I, people who play with me, I'm not going to disturb them in enabling them to hear everything inside of my house or my flat or, and then, you know, the noises outside in the car park, cars honking, you know, tr buses, loud noises, planes, whatever it might be. Uh, or even if you have kids and they're shouting or you have 
pets and dogs or whatever, and they're barking or something. Uh, you know, at least it, it keeps the privacy as well. It's also, uh, not only does it keep the privacy in the game, don't disturb others, but also I'm sure that the headset is not going to record any audio. Um, you know, well, normally it shouldn't be recording audio if the microphone is disabled, of course. So at least it's more private for me as well. I know that they're not going to capture my audio uh, because every VR manufacturer perhaps capture our audio, you just don't know. So I'm just saying that at the end of the day, I'd rather use this microphone than the one inside, but it does work, there's no problem. The other thing that we can talk about is the audio, the actual speakers here. They're not bad, they're okay. Uh, I wouldn't say they're super great um, compared to the HP Reverb G2 with, um, you know, with these speakers here, they're not as good, but at the end of the day, they're not bad, they're perfectly fine. They're loud enough. Um, they provide a good sensory perception, let's say. I personally have no issue whatsoever. I've had no issues with these headphones, no crackling, no nothing of any kind. Of course, as I mentioned before, if you're gonna wirelessly patch your headset to, let's say, a computer, whether it's the G7 HP, uh, you know, ZenBook or whether it's your, your desktop, you need to enable the driver, the audio driver inside of the actual computer first before you patch your headset wirelessly or with a cable to the software inside of the computer to link it back to it, okay? Otherwise, your audio will be completely, completely bad. But that's another video, so do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I mentioned, so you don't miss those videos. Um, the other thing I can talk to you about is the fact that, yeah, adjusting it is very cool. So as I mentioned, the weight distribution, now there's no battery in this, by the way. There used to be a battery in this, in the Pico Neo 2. So very sorry if in a previous video I said there was a battery here. There's no battery in here. No battery, it's just weight. It's just to create the weight, that's all. There's no battery in here, guys. In the Pico Neo 2, however, there was a way to charge the battery here um, versus you know having it here, but everything is otherwise at the front here. And it's honestly very, very comfortable in the sense that it doesn't fall off, um, it stays on my head, I don't have a very big head. However, I do recommend using a hat. When I don't use a hat, then I have issues, it will come down a bit more, or it won't feel as good, won't feel as snug on my face, and also, uh, and we can talk about this now, is the light leaking situation. Well, when you're wearing a hat, what will happen is that it will hide the side part, these parts here. So let me just take it off. It will basically hide this section here because there is actually a gap, you can put a finger here. So when you put a hat, the hat will generally, or cap, it will generally go here, so it will actually block the light coming in, so you have a lot less light leaking when you're wearing a hat. And also you'll find that it's just much more snug on your head, much more comfortable, the weight distribution will be much better as well. So I definitely recommend wearing a cap if you can, because you're gonna have a much more enjoyable experience inside of VR. If you don't use a cap, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have a bit more light leaking here. So if you position, let's say, like this is my window just here, then the light will come in and I will definitely see some light streaking coming outside. I mean, inside, going outwards. Uh, so by wearing a hat, it will block everything and boom, I don't have to you know, worry about the light. Now, in terms of the light coming from the nose, this part here, they do provide you some kind of rubber thing to put here, but honestly, I don't know how to put it on. Like, it's impossible to put on. So I tried it on the Pico Neo 3 Pro before. It was, I'm sorry, useless. And I tried to use it on the Pico Neo 3 Link it's useless. I think someone else needs to do a video about how to put this rubber thing. I don't, I don't have it on me, it's in, in my bag, so I forgot to take it. Uh, but basically it's impossible to put it in the headset. I don't know how you use it, uh, but honestly speaking, I'm just saying there's a rubber thing that comes to hide, to hide the below part. It doesn't really work great in my opinion. So, I don't know, I'm just saying in my opinion it doesn't work. So maybe it works for you, but for me it's not gonna work. So yeah, at the end of the day, when you put the, um, the headset on, you will see light coming below, but it's not that protruding. It's not that disturbing. It's okay, it's manageable. Uh, I can only compare it to the Oculus Quest 1 because I sold my Quests. Uh, I don't have any Meta products on this channel. As you know, we're the only channel, or one of the only channels that don't have any Meta Quest products on YouTube, we don't use Meta to boost algorithms because we don't believe in the strategy. So yeah, I can just you know compare it to the Quest 1. So at the end of the day, 
Um, is uh, there's as much light below as there are for the Quest One. However, compared to the HP Reverb G2, um, there is you can't compare it because the HP Reverb G2 has no light coming up. It's completely amazing in terms of. Let me just show you what they've done. And I think every man of every VR manufacturer should copy HP. Uh, you can see that the, basically they put the rubber thing here, and it blocks the light completely from coming in. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I love this gasket. This is my favorite gasket. Uh, the other thing I can talk to you about is that on the Pico Neo 3 Link, after using it more than 25 hours, is that now it is comfy, it is comfortable. However, uh, this has not taken the shape of my this has not taken the shape of my face yet. This part, which means that these things here. Oh, actually, let me just see if the camera can pick it up. This is actually quite thin. Just so you know, it's about 0.5 mm or 1 cm. This part here is, I think, about 0.5 mm or 1 cm. So when I put this on my face, because it's so thin, it actually feels a little sharp. I wouldn't say, of course, it's not going to feel like a blade on my face. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's very soft, yeah? But because it's not thick like here, here is thicker, and also this part here is thicker as well on these parts here. Because this part is very, this little section, just this little section there, this little tiny section, because it's very thin, this tiny little section here, it actually can hurt my face after a while, especially if the headset is too, too tight, then it can actually start to to make it feel uncomfortable. So, um, you know, these, these parts, as I mentioned, these parts here, and also these parts on the side here, because you'll find that this is what's gonna be on your face and not so much the inner part. It'll be more the outward part. So for me, that's a little bit of an issue. Um, comfort factor, it makes it, I would say out of 10, six and a half, seven out of 10 in terms of comfort. Um, I would give the HP Reverb G2 gasket out of 10, a nine out of 10. Excuse me. Yeah, the HP Reverb G2 gasket to me is a nine out of 10 compared to the gasket for the, eight, for the Pico Neo 3 Link. It's definitely, I would say, 6.5 or seven out of 10. And the gasket of the Pico Neo 3 Pro, however, I would say it's a good 7.5 out of 10. So it is more comfortable the HP, uh, sorry, the Pico Neo 3 Pro's gasket than the Pico Neo 3 Lynx gasket. However, after one hour of use, um, I would definitely say, or one hour and a half hour use, I would say that the Pico Neo 3 Pro's gasket goes from 7.5 to a 6, uh, because when you sweat, as I mentioned, and the rubber gets very hot sometimes, then it will be uncomfortable. So it is, for longer term use, more comfortable than Pico Neo 3 Pro, but the HP Reverb G2's gasket, it's so nice and flat everywhere. There's no, you know, there's no things going in and out and no out, outer region, inner things, you know. It's all nice, all perfect, as you can see here, all nice and flat. And it's the most comfortable experience in VR that I've had with any gaskets is this one, honestly speaking perfect gasket. I think every VR manufacturer should copy HP. HP should be the new standard uh, in gasket VR as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, it's an amazing gasket. Now, what else can I talk to you about? Well, let's go inside. Now, there is the, this I would say is not, I, I hate this. I really, really freaking hate this. Excuse me, I almost used the F word. I really, really don't like this whatsoever, uh, but I get it. It's a cheap way to set your IPD, which is basically uh, the resolution, uh, sorry, the distance between your eyes, your two eyes or your nose or whatever it is. Sorry, I'm not a scientist. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all born differently. We have different shapes of eyes, different distances of eyes, uh, different height of eyes, you know. So this is supposed to help you so that basically when you adjust it, uh, your experience in VR will be more custom to you. You can't set it in between each setting. There are three settings completely out, which I think is about 58 mm, all the way to about 50 IP, uh, IPD, uh, something like that. And then everything in, in between, there's one in between and that's it. But you can't, uh, you can't snap it in between each, each thing. Now, we're gonna go inside of the Pico now, and I'm gonna turn on the microphone, use the microphone of the actual Pico 
inside. So uh, I'm going to be using the internal Pico software. I'm not going to hook it up to Steam VR or anything like this today. I just want to 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 show you. I'm not going to do a store. You know, I, we're not going to go. This is another video. If you want to know what's inside of the store, what apps are there, all this kind of stuff, uh, in a more updated version compared to all the others, then hit the subscribe, the notification bell after you subscribe, so you don't miss that video. Of course, there are awesome apps inside. We can just talk about this very quickly. There are some awesome apps inside. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go inside the headset now. We're not going to do a tour. I just want to talk to you about the comfort level in terms of what it's like to be in the home, excuse me, and also what it's like to play some PC VR games, um, you know, and, and actually before we do that, there is one thing I'd like to tell you about is that there is an app that you can download for the Pico Neo 3 Link, which is not available for the Pico Neo 3 Pro users, uh, which will enable you to do a certain things. And we'll also go through that very, very quickly. In fact, um, let me see if I have my phone. No, okay, so we'll do that after I go inside of the Pico. Let's go inside the Pico first so I can show you what's what.